Have you made promises you just couldn't sing to Key? Yeah, you mommy, you promised you would play soccer with me. Hi, mommy, you promised me a pony. You promised me dinner. Well, we don't always keep our promises, but guess who does? God. God promised us a king, a Messiah, who would save us from our sins, and his name is Jesus. Stay tuned for the first lesson in our new series, The Promised Messiah, October the 8th. God always keeps his promises. worship with us this morning. Well, if you have anything to be happy about, anything to give God praise about, one more time, would you just say thank you and give God a hand clap of praise for keeping you and allowing you to make it back into the house of the Lord one more time. This morning, scripture reading comes from Psalms number 37, beginning at verse number 23, Psalms number 37 beginning at verse number 23. Here's what he says. The steps of a good man are ordered by God, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. The psalmist declares that even if we fall, that it's God that holds us up with his strong right hand. And you ought to give God glory and praise that he's been holding you in his hand all throughout the course of this past 17 months, even out throughout the course of this year, out of everything that you've seen and witnessed and experienced, it's been God that's been holding you. It's been God that's been keeping you. Come on, give God glory and praise that he's still been right by your side. Even when people have forsaken you, even when people have walked off and left you, God has been keeping you. You do know God is a keeper, don't you? I can't hear you. You do know God is a keeper, don't you? Amen. Our God, our Father, we thank you and bless you again for your word and your time to be here in worship. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for waking us up and giving us strength. We thank you for the health that we have. We thank you for the activity of our limbs. We thank you for the faculty of our mind. We thank you 
that our thoughts are stayed on you. We ask now, Father, that you would touch our service right now. We ask for your presence to overtake us. Let us feel you. Let us see you and hear you. Breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would have your way now. Bless those that are watching online virtually. Bless those that are in the building right now. God, we lift you up. We honor your holy name. Bless our pastor. Bless the one that would bring the word. We pray for a rhema word. We pray for a relevant word this morning. Somebody needs to hear you. Somebody needs to understand which direction to go. So, God, we pray now that your word would breathe life into us, that it would give us clarity, that it would give us understanding, that it would be medicine for our souls. God, for it's by your word that we get direction, that we get chastisement, God. So clean us up in the name of Jesus. We pray that someone would be saved on today, whether they are here in the sanctuary or whether they're watching virtually. We pray for their souls right now. We thank you, God, for every gift, every blessing that you have given to us thus far. Thank you for being a way maker. Even when we didn't know how the way was going to be made, somehow how some way God you showed up so we say thank you this morning we dare not take for granted every blessing you've given thank you God for the spirit to persevere even when when times got hard we thank you for your presence that kept us going so God we lift up every heart every soul right now we honor you in Jesus name thank God amen we're now in the hands of our music department Arise, oh God, and take your place. Let your kingdom be established. Oh, ancient of days, you are good, and your mercy endureth.
say you are good. good. So good. good. Real good. good. Still good. You are good. good. So good. good. Real good. Still good. You are good. good. So good. Real good. Still good. You are good. Come on, give God praise if you know he's been good. Is that how he's been that kind of good to you, huh? Come on, if he's been real good to you. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips if you know he's been good. Come on, look at somebody in your area and say he's still good. That's the wrong neighbor. They didn't come to have church. Look at somebody else and tell them he's still good. How do you know he's good, Reverend? All you got to do is look at me and tell that the Lord is still good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord again, worshiping with you all again on this morning. We thank you all for your presence, for being here in the building. We thank you for... Uh, not counting your robbery to give God praise and honor 
that in spite of whatever it is that we're going through, God still deserves our praise. Amen. Amen. It's giving time. It's giving time. Amen. If you need an envelope or an envelope, please raise your hand. Our ushers will be glad to serve you and assist you at this time. We understand that God is the greatest giver of all time. That he gave his only begotten son so that you and I could have life. Not just here for today, but eternally. And it is in his word that he requires that we should replicate what he has already done. The Bible declares that we are to have a starting point of giving a tenth, a tithe, a 10% of whatever comes into us. And I'm grateful that God gives me something that I can give back to him. Amen. That even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of people losing jobs, that God still blessed us so that we had something to give back to him. Come on, you ain't, you ain't happy, you ain't happy. That, that even, even if you did lose a job, God still met your needs somehow, some way. I hope you didn't give all the credit to, to President Trump. I, I hope you didn't give all of the credit to President Biden that before a stimulus check ever showed up, God was already giving you stimulus checks. And, and, and it don't always come in money. Sometimes it comes in other ways outside of money. How about just a good night's rest when you should be losing your mind, when you should be going crazy, but you're able to lay down and get rest at night. That, that's from seeds that you, that you sowed in times past. And you ought to tell God, thank you that whatever I have, it's a blessing to give back to you. And it don't always come back in money. Sometimes it comes back in other means in other areas. So I thank God that we, we worship at a church, that we serve under a pastor that teaches us how to give, that we're not stingy, that we're not stingy as a congregation, that we're not stingy as individuals. And I thank God for that. Because in the midst of a pandemic, when churches were closing down, our church was still thriving and functioning. That even while you guys were at home, we thank God that you were still able to go online. And some of y'all drove up here while we weren't having services, in-person services. And some of y'all were driving up here, dropping your, your tithe and your offering into the, the drop box. So we thank God for you. Will you just give your, yourselves a hand clap of praise just for being diligent and being faithful givers? that we were able to still do ministry and you know that we don't promote what we do, but we were still able to do ministry, that our pastor was still being well taken care of. Nobody gets the credit but God. And, and the old, we don't sing this song no more. We don't sing this song no more, but the old church would say, you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. That even if you tried, he's still gonna give more than what you give. Amen. Come on, if you're ready to give, if you're giving by Givelify, you can lift your smart device. If you're giving online, we, we encourage you to give as well. Our give, a giving platform is Givelify. Type in the Greater New Liberty Church. You'll see our church on that platform, and you can give as well. Our God, our Father, we thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you in giving. We thank you, God, that you've given us something to give. So, God, receive our gifts now. We sow into good ground. We know that this ground is fertile. So, God, we ask that you would have your way. Be a blessing to us so that we may be a blessing to others. We thank you now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Our sons and daughters, you may start now in giving. I've already given. Our deacons, you all may come at this time. Brethren, you may come. Amen. Ushers, you may send the remaining of the congregation. as you're standing. Will you help me bring our pastor up with your praise? Thank you. God is good. I said one more time, God is good. And he's worthy of all of our praises. Again, to glory to God, glory be to God for all of you. We say happy birthday to all of you who celebrated. I know April Worlds is celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday to her and uh, my uncle. Uh, he's usually at the 10 o'clock. Celebrated a birthday on yesterday. and So many of you celebrate birthdays and uh, anniversaries during this month. And we want to congratulate you and say happy birthday, happy anniversary to all of you. Amen. Nick had a birthday the other day. God bless you. Happy birthday. Tuesday. This coming Tuesday? All right. All right. You a November baby? Go on, man. May the Lord be with you. Sorry for you. I'm sorry. Amen. I have a couple of children who have birthdays in November as well, and so we will celebrate with them. Thanks be to God. Today is the day where the world celebrates Halloween here at the Greater New Liberty Church. We do not. We call it Hallowit Day or Holy Day. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowit be thy name. It is God's intention that we, this day belongs to God and God's people. 
and not to the enemy. So we are celebrating with our children and we've asked that you would bring them in cost. I see some of you wore your costumes. Reverend McCarley got his costume on. Brenda got her costume on. God, God bless you. KK got her costume on. Y'all look so good. God bless y'all. Make sure y'all go by the trunk or treat. We got, we got something for y'all. Y'all win the best prize of the day. Look good. Uh, parents, we do have uh, set up in the Welcome Center or Fellowship Hall, baby. In the Welcome Center, will be set up for children from the 8 o'clock to be able to go by and get their grab bags and uh, load it with goodies for our babies. Amen. Load it with goodies. Make sure you take them by their parents. Let them go by and grab their grab bags. And then uh, after 10 o'clock service, they will have bags to service those children as well. Amen. In trying times such as these, we really don't want kids knocking on doors. And uh, it's, it's too dangerous. And so we wanted to make sure we could provide a safe haven for them to be able to celebrate Holy Day. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me for prayer? Our God and our Father, oh, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. It is amazing how you keep on blessing us. Thou, our God, uh, are amazing in all of your ways. Your love blows our mind. It's amazing how you keep on blessing us in spite of us it's amazing how you watch over us each and every day it's amazing how your finger of protection is yet upon us every day of our lives we pause to tell you thank you bless this our time set aside to share in word and wisdom as we worship you Free our minds of the cares of this world. Let your word go forth with power, simplicity, clarity, so that every person may understand at their own level. God, may you be lifted up that someone who don't know you might see you and that those of us who do know you might be reminded of who you are. Thank you again for the privilege to preach. To you we give all glory and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Thank you, God. Amen, amen, amen. Would you do me the privilege of sharing with me in 1 King chapter 19? 1 King chapter 19. Thank God for our sons who preached last week for us as we were away. We certainly appreciate it. We were able to catch most of it online. And thank you all for standing in for me. Good to have a church stable enough that I can be away and take vacations. I didn't take a lot of vacations when I was younger in pastoring, but I'm making up for it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. First King chapter 19, I'd like to begin our reading at verse 4. First King chapter 19, verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself 
that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father. As he lay asleep under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and says to him, Arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, a cruise of oil at his head, and he did eat and drink laid him down again, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him, said unto him, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. So reads the divinely inspired word of our God. I'd like to take my subject from the very fourth verse where he says that he has requested for him that he might die. And he said, it is enough. I want to talk to you from this thought, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you? Honor to all whom honor is due. No matter how strong you are, how saved you are, how sanctified you are, no matter how much you attend church, read the Bible, fall on your knees and pray. No matter how much you attend Bible study, and or Sunday school, no matter how much you pay tithe and participate in ministry, no matter how much you are anointed and saved and gifted and talented and prayed up, every now and then you will get to the point where you say enough is enough. I, I, I would that you would flank me with your prayers and help me with your amen to tell the truth that no matter how long you've been in church and you love the Lord with your whole heart and you praise him with all that you have, but the truth is all God's children at some point or another will get to the point where you simply say enough is enough. Sometimes it has to do with your health. Sometimes it has to do with your mental capacity. Sometimes it has to do with your marriage. Sometimes it has to do with your money. Sometimes it has to do with them doggone children. Sometimes it has to do with your job. Sometimes it has to do with your church. Sometimes it has to do it enough. Yeah, it. You ever been there? You ever you you ever been? I'm, I'm I'm not talking to those of you who are fake and phony this morning. I'm. I'm really talking to those of us who have been hiding behind the smiles on our face and who, who want to look pious and look holy and we, we, we know how to play the role so that we look like we all right but down on the inside. That's why I want to talk to some of you busy bodies in the church who have too much time on your hand and busy picking and poking at folk, not knowing that these people are on the verge of throwing in the towel, tired of being sick and tired, crying themselves to sleep, walking the floor at night, pacing up and down, trying to figure out this day and that day when Monday runs into Thursday and Thursday topples on top of Sunday and nothing seems to be changing you get to the point where you simply say enough is enough when you take in a pill to go to bed and then taking a pill to get up in the morning you, you, you have to tell yourself enough is enough 
Stop reminding us to take our blood pressure pill. Pressure wouldn't be so mad if you just leave us alone. Can I help somebody? You ever been there? Women of God, you ever been there? Men of God, you ever, you ever been there? When you only looked at as a paycheck, you ever been there? When nobody sees any other worth in you, your opinion don't matter, your voice don't matter, just keep bringing the money home. Enough gets to be enough. Women, you ever been there? When you expected to cook, clean, be the lover and the cover, you'll get, you'll get that when you get home. You ever been there? Where you simply say to yourself, enough is enough. You want you to be superwoman and sexy. E enough. This stuff gets heavy sometimes. And then after all you do, nobody even takes time to say thank you. I appreciate it. It's, they look at it as that's what you're supposed to do. My daughter is not here. I can talk about her. She'll be at the 10 o'clock. I won't talk about her then. She snuck in my room yesterday. Sister James, after she needed cash to go get her hair done. It's amazing how prices of hair done gone up. That's a whole, that's part of my enough is enough. Need money for hair, need money for a cell phone, need money for this, that, and other. As she snuck in my room last night, Reverend Jenny, she closed the door behind her real quick. She said, Daddy. I said, yeah, baby. What's wrong with mama? <laughs> Go to your room. She said, don't you hear? Mm-hmm. That means stay in here. I don't want no water, no cookies, no nothing. Because it sounds like she's at a point well, enough, come on somebody, is enough. You ever been there? You ever been there? Some of you young children that don't know what we're talking about, just keep a living. Keep a living. When you're doing work every day, all day, like my wife is, and still when you get through, it look like ain't nothing done. When you, you done clean, cook, fold clothes, wash dishes, you done did all of this and then you still got a million other things to do. I'm through with y'all. Because that's the tenor of the text. The text is tailored to teach us that no matter who you are, at some point or another, you may get to the point where you say enough is enough. In the midst of all of this pandemic, epidemic, syndemic that we're in, in the midst of our fear, frustration, and fickleness, in the midst of problems, peril, and panic, I'm telling you that every now and then, in the midst of cannot... You cannot, you must not, you bet not, you will not quit. I, I, I know that you get, and, and I want you to know all through the Bible, there are real brilliant, wonderful, awesome, anointed people who got to the point where they said enough is enough. You remember Moses? The great emancipator, Moses, who led over two million people out of Egypt across this red sea of God, this great Moses. But when he got to the other side 
and dealing with those people that God had assigned them to. Moses had done all that he could do. He had taken all that he could take it and he had gotten frustrated when he got out of Egypt crossing the Red Sea. He had gotten frustrated and he said to God, these are your people. And he said, they done got on my last nerve. You, I, you can have this ministry. I want to quit. You remember? You remember Jeremiah, the young preacher? Been preaching from very early age, called, uh, ordered by God. God explained to him, I called you from your mother's womb. But as Jeremiah started going through, being chased for his life, Jeremiah got to the point, he said, you tricked me. No, read it when you get home. Go back and look at it. He said, you know what? You tricked me, God. This ain't what you told me this was going to be about. You know what? I ain't never preaching no more. And then he came to himself and said, felt like fire. Shut up in his balls. I'm trying to tell you, I don't care who you are. You will get to the point. Even Paul himself got to the point after going through all he want to on his way to Corinth. He has gone through all he's gone through, but he gets to the point in his life where he didn't want to preach no more. And he said to God, I want to quit. You'll get there. And here is Elijah, the great preacher. He's at the point, he's come through dry brooks and dirty birds and depleted barrels. He's gone through seeing God in a special way. And now Jezebel has turned up the fire. She is in Ahab's mind and they are set out to kill and capture this great prophet of God. And he's hiding now up under a juniper tree. He's fleeing for his life. Jezebel has put a hit out on him and he has made his, up his mind, I got to get away from this girl and her husband and he, he's hidden up under a juniper tree and we're able to peek in and hear him as he began to talk to God. And as you look in on chapter 4 or chapter 19 verse 4 the Bible says that he is now journeyed into the wilderness and he's sitting down upon the a juniper tree. One writer calls it a broom tree because the branches and the limbs thereof look like long sticks with, with, with fans flaming from them as leaves and he's sitting up under this shaded tree where he ought to be relaxed. Watch this. He looks relaxed but his mind is at war. You'll get it when you get home. That, 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 that sometimes right now some people sitting on your pew look relaxed but their mind is at war. They, they're really saying you know what? I'm tired. If, if I don't get some word in me. I don't know what I'm about to pop off, snap off. I'm, I'm enough is enough. And here it is. While he's sitting there, the Bible says he have a talk with the Lord. The Bible says that he made a request to die. He says enough is enough. Oh Lord, Take away my life, for I'm no better than my forefathers were. I, I've had enough. And then it happened. What? You, 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 you don't know when to shout, so let me help you. I, I don't know how far I'm going to get in this sermon, but I want to tell you, when you pray to God, he answers. You know, this is Elijah who's used to having his prayers answered. This is the Elijah who prayed to God. Remember he told Ahab that it would be no rain until he said that it would be rain. Prayed to God and God stopped all the rain and the dew. For three and a half years, it did not rain. And then spoke to God again and rain began to come down after three. So he knows that God answers his prayer. So boy God. And knowing that God answers his prayer, he says to God, I request to die. Let me shout by myself. I'm trying to tell you that sometimes you need to learn how to be thankful that there are some prayers God did not answer. 
If there anybody in here want to tell God, I ain't going to ask you what, you ain't got to share your personal business with nobody, but if there anybody in here that want to tell God, thank you that the stuff I prayed for did not happen. Thank you that the request I made as I look back over my life now, I'm so glad you didn't let me do or have or go what I requested to. God knows best. God knows best. And if you could ever just steal away under your secret juniper trees of life and have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about your struggles. He'll hear your fainted cry. And he'll answer you by and by. Just a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right. And as he steals away in his private, under his private time, he begins to talk with the Lord. And then it happens. What happens? Well, if, if you are at the point where enough is enough, listen to this little bald head preacher who tells you that the first thing you must be willing to do is you must be receptive to divine assistance. I'll say it again. You must be receptive to divine assistance. Can I help somebody? Will you lean in close? Let me tell you, because some of you all, especially Christians, especially us, some of you all have been so used to helping others that you don't want to let nobody help you. I'm pointing in the right direction. I'm, I'm heading in the right direction. I'm pointing at some of y'all literally and figuratively so that you're so busy doing for others, you're so busy making sure everybody else is all right. But ma'am, can I tell you that every now and then you're going to have to let somebody help you. Every now and then, you're going to have to know that God will assign somebody to help you. When you get to the point where enough is enough, God will send the most unexpected people to stop by your situation. Somebody that ain't got no long, drawn-out words. Somebody that ain't going to even ask you what you need. It's just somebody that says, I know I'm on assignment, and God told me. You see, I don't understand why if you're willing to be used by God, why aren't you willing to let somebody else be you to bless you by God? I don't care how strong you are, everybody needs somebody sometimes. Yeah, I know, I know you've been pulling yourself up by your own bootstrap, man. You self-made millionaire, you done it all by yourself. I don't care, child. At some point or another, you're going to need a helping hand. You're going to need somebody that makes a phone call, somebody that drops by, somebody that opens a door, somebody that gives favor, somebody that has influence, somebody that has resources. God will always send somebody. Help his people when they need help the most. And in the text, God sends an angel. Oh, you, you didn't see it. It's in verse 5. It says, as he lay up under the juniper tree, sleep, an angel stopped by. Y'all see it? Now, I ain't here to argue with you about angels today. But I do believe in the whole word of God. And the Bible says, Mother Boy God, that the angel touched him. Uh, uh, I ain't the most intelligent person in the world. I ain't the sharpest knife in the draw. But when you try to tell me all angels are just spiritual, uh, I, I'd have to disagree because if a spirit, how did it touch him? I'm more prone to believe that sometimes God dressed angels up in earthly suits. 
As a matter of fact, the Bible said be careful because sometimes you are entertaining the angels unaware. Sometimes you don't know that God has people on assignment that's sitting right next to you. That's why you've heard our ancestors say all day and all night, angels are, oh yeah, it, 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 it ain't just what you're thinking about. There's spiritual seraphims flying over the top of you. But God has assigned people that will circumference your own life and they're there to build a heads around you to keep hurt, harm, and danger away from you. And you ought to tell God, thank you for my assigned angels in my life. Y'all don't hear me today. I, I, I can walk all through the Bible when Daniel was in the lion den, the Lord sent an angel. Uh, when Peter was in prison, the Lord sent an angel. When Joshua was on the crucial battle, the Lord sent an angel. And when Jacob was trying to get a blessing he had never had, the Lord made him wrestle with an angel. I'm trying to tell you, when God getting ready to bless you, every now and then, he'll send by an angel. A sweet voice that'll call and say, is everything all right? He'll send an angel that walk by your desk and say, I've been praying about you. He'll send an angel that'll give you a hug. It's an angel that'll shake a hand. An angel that'll bless you with a blessing you wouldn't expect. An angel. If you read the book of Revelation, God said he gave a word to the angelos of the church the pastor of the church who is an ambassador of God who should have been spending time with God in the presence of God well, that's what an angel is somebody that's been in the presence of God somebody that's been in the word of God and somebody that's on an assignment from God well, somebody might say well he'll use me as an angel because sometimes you need to recognize that God got you in his presence because he's about to give you an assignment Has he got you basking in his word because he's about to give you an assignment? And the word of God, the word of God said, said that God sent an angel. Preach there, Shaq, I'm trying. The word of God said that God sent an angel. And when the angel came by, the boy was asleep up under the juniper tree. His mind is at war, but God put his spirit at peace and sent an angel, and the angel touched him. Angel face, I don't know how much I'm going to get through with this, baby, but the Bible said that when the angel touched him, woke him up and sitting at his head. Is some baked bread sitting at his head was a cruiser of water. You, you don't get it. I, I said at his head was bread and water. Watch this, son. At his head was bread and water. At his head was bread and water. God sent an angel with bread and water. Bread is a representation of the word of God. Ain't God all right? Lord, give us this day our daily bread. It's that which fulfills our nourishment. God said, whenever I'm fitting to do something in your life, I'll fill you up with a word. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you for the bread you gave for me. Thank you for bread that's directly just for me. Thank you for the bread that you sit in my presence. Thank you. For my bread, I know. I know Raven. And then the next part he says, and he gave him water. Thank God, all right. Water is not just a representation of trouble, but water is also a representation of the Holy Spirit. How you know that, Rev? Because you remember in John 14, or 4 and 14, Jesus said to him, uh, I'm going to give you some water, and the water I give you, you never going to have to thirst again. Ain't God all right? He wasn't talking about physical water. He was talking about the water of the Holy Spirit that's going to quench every thirst that comes into your life. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you ain't never going to have to thirst for this ever again. 
In other words, the Lord said, I'm going to send you some divine assistance. There was one more thing he gave him. There was one more thing he gave him. There, 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 was, there was one more thing he gave him. He, 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 he said, the angel of the Lord touched him and said unto him, arise and eat and look. Behold, there's a cake there. There's a cruise of water at his head. He did eat. He drank and laid him down again. Now, God told me to tell you that, that when enough is enough, you need to eat you some word, fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, and then get you some rest. You ain't hear me. I said, sometimes you need to fill yourself with some word, get a close with the Holy Spirit, and then get you some rest. Come here, dino woman. Come here, dino man. I don't care how strong you are. You're going to need to rest sometime. You need to take some time where you simply do nothing. You need to sit back, lay back, and don't touch nothing. Don't do nothing. Everybody want to eat? Tell a man for himself. Eat what you can find. If you can't find nothing, don't eat nothing. But today, I ain't doing nothing. Look at one person and say rest. You need to rest so you can rejuvenate. You need to rest so you can re-energize. I don't care who gets mad. They're going to be mad if you rest. They're going to be mad if you serve them because they don't appreciate what they've been having. And sometimes they're going to miss it when it's gone. Tell them rest. And if they don't like it, tell them I suggest that you rest too. You want to know where I was last Sunday? You want to know where I was? Huh? You want to know where I was? You, you want to know? You want to know with your nose itself? You want to know? Rest. I took my girl, got on a plane, flew out of town, and rest. All day Friday, rest. All day Saturday, rest. Why? Because I know I'm on assignment. And if I don't rest, I can't serve properly. Even God himself, on the seventh day, he rested. And if God took a rest, you hear what I said? I said, if God took a rest, what make you think you don't need to rest sometimes? I know he, I know sometimes you want to be deep, but you ain't got to be real deep all the time. Sometimes you need to see what's right before your face. Sometimes on Saturday morning, you ain't got to go to work, slap the alarm clock, knock it straight off the nightstand. Lock your door. Turn your lights out and just rest. If you rest, watch God re-energize you. And the Bible says that, that he said, do you, do you know something? I'm finna move on. You, you, you know something? You know something? I thought about it tomorrow. Marcus. Perhaps, perhaps this pandemic that I don't believe God sent, but I believe he sanctioned it. And perhaps, Sister Smith, perhaps he sanctioned a pandemic to make some of us rest. Perhaps when the devil was up to what he was up to and finna send this pandemic, perhaps God said, you know what? I told them I'll take everything and make it work for their good. It's a good time if we let my people rest. If I shut down some of their jobs, if I make it so some of them got to work from home. Hmm. Maybe then they could rest, rejuvenate, and then come back and serve me with fire 
and, and a, a new energy and a renewing of their strength that causes them to do greater than they ever done in their life. Elijah had to receive, had to be receptive to divine assistance. Help me, Holy Ghost. But then he had to remember his devoted assignment. See, the Lord says to him, what well, you see there, that rib? I'm glad you asked. It, it, he, he says to him, he says, uh, as you lay down up under this tree, he sends the angel, going to feed him, give him something to drink, lay him down, let him get some more rest. And then watch this. And he looked and behold, there's a cake in verse 6. He lays him down again, let him get a rest. Verse 7, and the angel of the Lord came again, second time, touched him again, says to him, get up and eat again. Why? Because the journey that I got for you is too great. For you to try to take and you ain't been properly nourished and you ain't been properly, yeah, you ain't been properly fed and you ain't been properly rested. In other words, God told me to tell you before you give up, he got more for you to do. Would you just point at somebody and tell them your journey is not over yet? Would you, would you tell them that God got more work for you to do? There's a divine assignment with your name on it that, some, that God needs you to be devoted to. And he says, I'm feeding you to prepare you, Angela Moore, for what's yet to come. The reason why I'm giving you this word, the reason why I'm laying your mind to rest is because I got some work for you to do. That you got to equip yourself to be able to handle your task. Because he says there's more work. I'm so glad to see this today. That, 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 that some of you all think your best blessing is behind you. But God sent this South Memphis preacher to tell you that there's more in front of you than there is behind you. I don't care what your age is. God said, I got some work for you to do that's ahead of you. I got some more people that I need you to help me get saved. I got some more people that I need you to serve. I got some more lives I need to be changed. I got some more. Oh! You got some more praying to do. You got some more nurturing to do. You got some more providing to do. You got some more blessing to do. You got some more people you got to bless. He says, you need to be in tune with the assignment that's before you, that God has a future planned ahead for me. That all of my blessings are not behind me. God is not through. I just told you this a couple of weeks ago. He's not through blessing you. Would you look at one person and say, there's more to come? There's, there's more to come. And so here it is. I'm finished. Here it is. Here it is. Daryl Shack. God says, I know you've had some success, but I'm not through with you. He said, don't come complacent on your right now. Know that I need you to, I'm talking to somebody, I need you to stay hungry. Tomorrow, I need you to stay hungry. Sarita, I need you to stay hungry, baby. I, I need you to, Deek, I need you to know that we've not reached our pinnacle. We've done well, Larissa. We've come from a long way. We've made some advances, uh, uh, Angela Moore. We've, we've come a long way, baby girl, my wife. We've come a long way from way up street. But God told me to tell you, he ain't through with you. That he made a promise to you. Juanita James, he gave us a vision that we've not re remember what I told you 10 years ago. That, that this is a church where we're supposed to come learn how to do ministry at another level. But the vision is yet to come. Ain't God all right? He, he says, I want you to understand that you need to prepare yourself for the turn of the corner. Brother Ballard, Sister Ballard, you need to prepare yourself. That's why you can't get, 
yeah, upset in your well-doing now. You can't get frustrated because you've out to fish differently. Mothers, you can't grow relaxed because things are going differently. You can't become worried because we covered our faces with masks and the church ain't filled with people. God said, I'm still blessing you. I'm just blessing you in another way. I'm still using you, but I'm just using you in another way. Don't get become complacent with where you are because there's more work to come. Eat, drink, get to some rest because there's more to come on this journey. More souls to be saved. And every time you hear about young people shooting each other down on the street, it's more to come. Every time you hear it ain't safe, even in a funeral procession, there's more to come. You hear people being shot down in their own homes. Kids can't go to school because somebody's carrying a gun, bringing children, bringing guns in lunch boxes. It's more work to do. And so God said, eat, drink, and rest because I'm not finished with your assignment. Watch this. You must be receptive to divine authority. And you must remember your devoted assignment. And then you must be able, watch this, to receive God from a different approach. That it doesn't always come like you thought he would come. The Bible says, Elijah takes the order and he, read the story when you get home, and he heads out, but he heads out in the wrong direction. But boy, God, he goes in the opposite direction from where he was blessed and where he should be going. He, he, goes, he goes not back to, you remember he had won the battle on Mount Carmel against these uh, school of prophets and, 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 and Baal. He had already, you remember, they had to show down and they prayed to their gods, and Elijah's gods rained down fire. Y'all remember the story? He had, he had won, but he doesn't head back to where he had victory. He heads in the opposite direction. The Bible said, read it when you get home, the Bible said that he goes some 40 days in the wrong direction. 200 miles in the wrong direction. And he ends up, Watch this. Watch this great new This is pretty. He ends up socially distancing himself. It's in there. It's in, it's, it's in 1 Kings 19. He ends up, the Bible said, he ends up in a cave. He's isolated. He's, he's self-socially distancing himself. And while he's there, he's still looking for God to do something. And then, Nick, this went and happened. The Lord came in a different approach. The Bible said, when you get it, I'm through with y'all. The Bible said that God sent earth, wind, and fire. It's in the text. Not the band. But the Bible said God shook up the earth. Ain't God all right? The wind started blowing, and then the fire started falling down. If you want to hear more about it, come to the clock. The fire stopped blowing down and the, and the wind stopped blowing and, and, and the earth stopped shaking. Ain't God all right? But can I tell you something? Watch God. Ain't one, he doesn't show up in the wind. They checked it out. They looked in the wind. God wasn't there. They looked in the shaking of the earth. God wasn't there. They looked in the fire. God wasn't there. But what was he there, Shaq? Peeping out of the cave, the Bible said, and Elijah heard a still small voice. God trying to tell you that often in the storms of your life, don't listen for God in the loud thunderous roar. Listen for God in the small, still voice. 
One writer said it like this. He said, God spoke in a silent whisper. That he doesn't have to be real loud because the power is not in how loud he is. The power is in his isness. In the fact that God is. So when he speaks, doesn't matter how loud he says it, but with a small, quiet whisper, when God say, it's going to be all right. See, sometimes you're listening for God in the loud, thunderous noise. God say, you miss me. That's why it's important that you keep your mind on the right channel. That's why it's important that you stay focused on the right thing. That's why it's important that you listen to the right preacher. That's why it's important that you get the right teaching because God often speaks to you in a small, still voice. Baby, everything. Don't worry about all the other noise going on around you. When you belong to God, his sheep knows his voice. You'll hear him say, I got you. Stay still. Don't panic. I got you. Everything going to be all right. Don't worry about what it look like. Know that the same God that came through before, he's coming through again. It's in a small, still voice. In my mind, it's dramatic music playing in the background. And God saying, son, son, listen to me. I got you. Haven't I always come through for you? Who am I talking to? I'm through with my sermon, but who am I talking to? Is there anybody here remembering God said to you, haven't I always made a way? Don't I always bring you out? Don't I always turn things around for you? Somebody lift up your hand and say, have your way, Lord. In my mind, in my money, in my marriage, in my health, in my strength. Some, somebody ought to tell them, have your way, God. I hear you. I see you, God. I know not only can you handle it, but I know you will handle it. You've always come through for me. When I was on my way to hell, you came through. Gave your son. Your son died on a hill called Calvary. Stayed in the grave three days. And third day morning, he got up with all power. Still whispering. I got you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Same God that made a way before. You lift your hands right there and say, same God. It's just a different approach. Some of you miss God because you look for him to do the same thing the same way. God said, in this season, I'm shifting my approach. Everybody else been yelling in your ear, but I'm coming in a small, still voice. And you got to tune in. You got to lean in with both ears. You got to hear God as he settles your mind, settles your spirit. I'm finished when I tell you this. It's a different approach. I hope you got that last point. It's a different approach. In this approach, he doesn't fix it first and then settle your mind. In this approach, he settles your mind and then fix your problem. In this season, God said, you're going to have to trust me when you can't trace me. When everybody else is panicking, you got to hold on to his small, still 
voice. Turn your TV down. Turn your radio down. Turn your cell phone down. Because you got too many other voices in your ear. In this season, you need to hear God with his small, still voice. Sometimes, Mother Willis, it ain't going to be no long, drawn out situation. Sometimes you're just going to hear him say, all things work together for your good. For you are mine. All things work together for your good. For you are mine. All things work together for your good, for you are mine. God says, I got you. Lift your hands and tell them, thank you, God. For blessing me in spite of me. For saving me in spite of me. For healing me in spite of me. For changing me in spite of me. When I was on the verge of giving up, thank you that you didn't give up on me. Anybody want to tell him thank you? Doors of my father's house is open. Differently. God says I'm dealing with you differently. In this season of your life, God says I want a full commitment. I want you to commit to me, not just verbally, not just by attending church, but I want to hear from you regularly. I want you to rest your mind, your spirit, so you can have private moments under your personal juniper trees. Your juniper tree is like your closet. You know, your prayer closet, it doesn't mean the place where your clothes are. You don't have to find a tree in your yard and go sit under it. No, your juniper tree can be your bed. And be your shower, be your car. It can be your pew. It's a place where God, listen, sends somebody who has a personal relationship with Him, somebody who spends time in His Word, and somebody who accepts His assignment. Not only am I looking for God to send somebody who spend personal time with him, who know, who spend personal time with him, who know his word and who been in his presence. But mama, that's who I believe he's making us. Angels on assignment. People who've been spending time with God, staying in his word, and willing to follow his assignment. There's at least five of you in here right now. God told me to tell you, you've been cheating him because you've not been carrying out his assignment for your life. You've become complacent with where people told you to work. But you've gotten out of place because you haven't done what he told you to do. You cannot maneuver yourself around God. You must be obedient to his will in your way. And let me help you by telling you, God's assignment are not going to always be what you want to do. Some of my best sermons are not preached in the pulpit. Some of the most impressive sermons I've preached to myself, where I've been oppressed, I was preaching to young teenage boys on the basketball court, riding on a bus, sharing Jesus with these young boys. Yesterday, I took some young boys out for lunch. We bought them food, and before they got ready to eat, we said to them, you need to say your grace. One young boy reached over and grabbed the hand of one teammate and other reached over and grabbed the hand of the other teammate. Another reached over and grabbed the other hand of another teammate and my heart got heavy. As I see boys bow their head every day in practice, every day before we end practice, we end practice 
praying. Some of your best work won't be in the church. Can I tell y'all that's why some of you don't get used because the only place you want to be used is where you can be seen. You got to be willing to work behind the scene. You got to be willing to work under a juniper tree where there's no audience. It's one-on-one -on -one where God assigned you to touch somebody. Watch this. Not physically touch, but spiritually touch somebody. Let me help you, Greater New Living. Let me equip you. You can touch somebody by just saying good morning. You can touch somebody by saying, you look wonderful today. You can touch somebody by saying, has anybody told you I love you lately? I want you to know I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. I'm all man. All man. I don't have a feminine side. I ain't in touch with feminine side. I ain't mad at those of you who do. But as for me, it ain't a feminine bone in my body. My feet rusted, my hand crusted. I'm all man. If I get lotion, it's cause Gloria put it on me. But every now and then I find a need, a responsibility to tell Cleve, I love you, man. Every now and then I tell my deacons, I love you, man. Because that's an assignment on my life. Every now and then I call my son, Reverend Trinity Phillips, and I say, I'm proud of you and I love you with my whole heart. What I'm trying to tell you, sometime your juniper tree is going to be with people you never imagined it would be with. A small, still voice that God will use you. Even with the message today to go tell somebody that's at their wit's end. When you hear people at work say, you know what, I, I can't take no more. Enough is enough. Tell them, come here, come here. I heard you say you can't take no more. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to be receptive <laughs> to divine assistance. You need to know God's about to send you something. And you need to be devoted to this assignment that God got for your life. You can't die. You can't quit. You can't give up because there's more to come. And you need to tell him, my brother or sister, you need to look for a different approach. God's going to speak to you differently. He's doing something in your life differently. you here today. Would you get up and receive God? Would you come? Would you stop talking about it and be about it? Today, make a decision. You, looking at me, listening to us, right where you are, in your homes, right where you are, would you make a decision today? I'm going to give my life to Christ today. I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to be saved. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he paid the price for the penalty of all of my sins. And I believe that he rose on the third day morning. Thereby confessing that with my mouth while believing it in my heart, I know that right now I am saved. Now that I'm spiritually saved, I need to be spiritually committed. Will you come? Let us help you in your walk with God. This is our appeal because we believe that falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Would you give God a hand clap of praise today? Amen, amen. Amen. Don't forget to take our children by the Welcome Center. Allow them to be blessed with grabbing their grab bags, candy, and snacks free of charge. Let these babies be blessed. But you cannot grab five bags to take to other people. If you want five bags, you have to come back after the 10 o'clock because whatever is left 
We, they're going to give it away. We're not saving anything to next Halloween or Holy Day. We, we're not saving it. So we want to we wanna give it away. Amen. But they can't give it away to the end. So, But please take all of our children by and get a bag. Let them pick whatever bag they want. The biggest one, whatever they got. I don't know how they're doing it over there, so I won't overspeak. But they are prepared to serve you. Also, this week, November the 6th, November the 6th, what day is that on, Rissa? Saturday, that's next Saturday, we will have a Shelby County Sheriff's Department will be hosting a hiring fair. They're looking for employees. There are many people say they need a job, but they won't fill out an application. These people are giving away money. They're paying. I'm upset with what they pay. Because when I worked there, they didn't pay us like this. Hallelujah. So since I can't get the money, some of y'all go get it. Cleveland won't let me put in no application. Because I'll go back to work. I asked them. They, they, they were going to another church. I saw and I called my good friend, uh, the sheriff and the Chief Jeller, uh, both, I, I know both of them well, the Chief Jeller and I are very good friends. I called and fussed. He said, hey man, uh, you need to bring this to Whitehaven. And he says, say no more, man, I, no problem. So they're coming on the 6th. We want to offer people, if you know anybody, it, it's not just for members of our church, it's for all of the city of Memphis and abroad. If you are watching online, November the 6th, you got to be able to pass a drug test. You're going to have to, you know, so just don't smoke no blunt this week. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you got to pass a drug test. When I don't know when they're going to test you, but, but come. They're going to do some interviews on the spot. Uh, the, they got salary and they're offering bonuses. They're offering bonuses for signing up. Amen. So tell somebody to come out, fill out application, and uh, and hopefully get an interview on the spot, and prayerfully get hired. Amen. Now, now listen. If you're gonna act a fool, you're gonna go down there and get in trouble. Don't tell them Pastor Jack sent you. Mess up my name. I want you all to be willfully employed. Amen. And then this week, starting Wednesday night, we will start uh, our annual marriage conference. Amen. Those of you who are married, those of you who are thinking about getting married, if he's been promising you he's going to marry you, uh, or if you've been getting on your knees proposing to men, you need to be here for sure. <laughs> You, I've, been, I've been seeing some of y'all dropping on your knees asking Negroes to marry you. Listen, you come first. You, 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 you need to get here first. I need to show you something. You done lost your everlasting mind. I, I don't know what's wrong with you. That I better not see one of the women of Great New Liberty on your knees asking no Negro to marry you. Try to snatch all your weave out your head. We don't play that. No. I think you ought to be treated like a woman at all times. Amen. And I think that contrary to what the popular thing going on in America nowadays, contrary to what anybody been telling you, there is a role for a man and there's a role for a woman. Don't get that messed up because of what has become popular. That's why marriages are not lasting. Because people got roles all switched up. And whatever God intended from the very beginning, he still intends today. Thank you for the three claps and the four amen. And the rest of y'all come to the conference early. It starts at 6.30. You get here at 6. We want to help marriages. There are so many marriages that are in turmoil in the pandemic have struggled 
uh, stand together. So many people, you try to look like you're happy and you're really not happy because the enemy has been attacked in your house. Amen. Your relationship. If you got a girlfriend that's going through, they don't go through counseling. Black people don't like to go through counseling. Tell them to come to the conference. They can come. It's free of charge. Free of charge. You're going to be here about an hour, hour, 15 minutes, and we'll be gone. We have prayer, and then we straight into the conference. Amen? Please come starting Wednesday. It will be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We will also have games for couples, prizes to give out to couples. Please be here third through the fifth for our marriage conference. Last but not least, I know that you've heard that uh, the state has relaxed the mask mandate, that masks are no longer mandated uh, in the state of Tennessee. But that don't have nothing to do with Great New Liberty. In the state of Greater New Liberty, masks are still required. Amen. We will be meeting with our pandemic team this week to see if uh, they have suggestions. But if, in order to take your mask, you're going to have to show proof of your vaccination card and some more stuff. And if you don't want to do all of that, just keep your mask on. Listen, you remember when they came out with the vaccination and some of y'all said, I ain't taking it, I'm letting some more folk uh, get it first. Well, that's how we are with the mask. We're going to let some more folk take theirs off first. We're going to keep ours on. God bless you. I love you. May God bless you and keep you. Keep us in your prayer. Come on, bow your heads with me. Our God, our Father, we thank you for our time in the word. We thank you for your word that helps us and assures us that you are there, even in a still voice. We ask now, God, that you would keep us as we leave this place. Give us grace to travel to our many different destinations. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This first side to my left, if you all would stand, you all may exit.